Hello everybody, today I'm going to be reading Diary of Wimpy Kid, The Plainview Serial Killer. This was actually supposed to be uploaded on Saturday, and it is Sunday you guys are going to be seeing this, but I've been feeling a bit burnt out from uploading kind of like these, all the longer fan fictions from Diary of Wimpy Kid. So yeah, but hopefully I will be back to normal in the next couple weeks, and we'll be able to deliver a full-length upload for you guys. But for now, enjoy this shorter fan fiction. Uh, I really have been trying to get out like longer fan fictions to you guys because those are really fun to read and I think um, just more people enjoy them. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna have a shorter upload this week and maybe if you guys are lucky and if I could squeeze it in, I'm hopefully we'll have an upload for you guys sometime during the week, an extra one maybe on Wednesday. But yeah, anyway, like I said, Diary of Wimpy Kid, the Plainview Serial Killer is what we're gonna be reading today, and yeah. Make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell not to miss another upload. I do read Wimpy Kid content on the weekly, if you guys aren't subscribed and you're interested in that. Just hit the subscribe button. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into Diary of Wimpy Kid, the Plainview Serial Killer. Tuesday. I don't know where to start, just it was horrible. One of my classmates, Jamar Law, he was found dead, and I'm the one who discovered his corpse. I was on my way to my yearbook club meeting and I saw a few drops of blood leading from one classroom to the stairwell. I don't know why I did it, perhaps out of morbid curiosity or something else entirely. I opened the door and what I saw will haunt me for the rest of my life. Jamar's severed head sitting next to a chair and his dis dismembered body laying in the chair with his left arm hacked off. For right now, the school is closed while they try to find out who did this. Oh Jamar, I never liked you, but you deserved so much better than this. I'm so sorry. Wednesday. They found Jamar's murder weapon. Well, part of it. A bloody saw was found in the men's bathroom. Safe to say, that's our murder weapon. The police keep coming to me for questioning about Jamar's murder. Mom has been trying to send them away every time, and she's trying to get me to go to therapy. I don't know how much kind words can help me with what I saw, but it can't hurt, I guess. School's closed down for the next week, so the police can do their investigation. I doubt I can help, but I'm going to try and do some research myself. First thing I'm going to do is, when Dad gets home, ask to go to the library. They have a big forensic section, so I'm sure something there can help me find some clues. Thursday, I brought Rowley into the investigation. I wanted to do this myself, but Rowley's dad's a cop, so maybe we can get some information from him. Rowley's not helping with the forensic side of things just as well, because he didn't see the body. For now, he's calling up our classmates and asking them what they were doing at the time of the murder. For now, though, I found a small piece of evidence. It isn't much, but there was no way death by saw wouldn't leave blood splatters. I'm not talking about the puddles. I'm saying the saw would have made the blood go much further out than just the puddles underneath Jamar's corpse, especially considering he was only a few feet from the wall. So either the saw's a red herring or the killer of the time and know how to clean that up. Friday. Other than the blood stains not matching the murder weapon, I haven't found anything useful from the forensics books. So I've shifted my focus to getting statements from everyone else at the school. So far everything matches with what I saw, but there is something I find very worrying. If everyone is telling the truth, it means I was the last person to see Jamar alive. About an hour before I found his dead body, he asked me for directions to the drama club. Now that I think about it, the classroom he was found in was in the same building as the drama club, and I think Erica is in the drama club. Erica has been one of the few uncooperative people so far. But one way or another, I have to get her to talk. This is Kenny from the local news media. What can you tell me about your boyfriend Jamar? Saturday. I don't know how, but the killer knows what I'm doing. I should have been careful keeping this a secret. This morning when I went to get the mail, I found a letter with only my name sharpied on it. I don't know what I was expecting, but it certainly wasn't this. If you keep sticking your nose where it doesn't belong, your body will never be found. The Handyman. The only times I really let people know what I was doing was during my interviews and at the library. Someone was probably listening in or something. Who is this handyman anyway? If they already have a name for themselves, they must have planned this and known they would not make a name for themselves. I think I'm going to look up this handyman. I doubt I'll find anything, but it might be worth a look. This is bad. I assumed this was an isolated incident, but no. This has been going on for years. See, the handyman was a serial killer in the late 90s. He or she targeted middle school students, killed them, and cut off the left hand of each of them. They were never caught. The Handyman Strikes Again by news reporter Linda, Be Linda Belcher. Plain views in shambles after the eighth victim of the Handyman was found. The victim, Alicia Walters, was found with a letter from the Handyman in her pocket made from old newspaper clipping. 
Their cause of death was deemed to be three stabs in the back of the head with a screwdriver. If anyone, if anyone has any information that could lead to the handyman's capture, call 1-800-214-0588. The handyman always kills with maintenance schools and targets whoever found the precious body, sending threatening notes to torment his victims before he kills them. If any of this happens to you, contact the police. Pop Tony's two-for-one deal. Order any one topping pizza and receive a second one free. Wow, that's actually a good deal. I guess all of my classmates can be ruled out as the culprit, not at the matters anymore. I'm done investigating. Tomorrow, I'm going to the police station and showing them this note. I feel like I was so close to cracking the case, but if the handyman is coming after me, it just isn't worth it. Sunday. No, 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 no. It's Dad. He doesn't believe me. I showed him the note and the news article and begged him to take me to the police station. After all that, he still seems this is just some sort of prank. In desperation, I told him I'd go to the police station myself, and he reacted in the worst way possible. Good luck with that. Worse yet, the school called everyone today and told us we have to be back tomorrow. I'm going to warn Rally about this. If the handyman really does kill me, I want Rally to know who they are and what they're capable of. I hope it doesn't come down to that. As long as I stay where people can see me, I should be fine, right? Monday. I'm back at school. Nothing terrible has happened yet, but knowing any adult I pass could be planning how they're going to kill me is nerve-wracking. Not making things any better is Rowley. I told him to dress in a way where he wouldn't be easily recognizable, and I expected him to wear a hoodie or something. What I did not expect was him to come to school dressed like a damn lion. Something important came to light today. Though two of the girls in my homeroom approached me during lunch about the case. Becky claims Mr. Nerns never showed up to gaming club the day Jamar died. Stranger still, Miss, Mrs. Hernandez canceled last minute on that same day. We're all, we're all meeting at the library after school. Stacy says she has an idea to find the clue we need to track the killer. The girls and I practiced our plan of action for over three hours. The only major wrench in our plan is Rowley chickened out. He was supposed to guard the shed entrance while the girls monitored some walkie-talkies they gave me so they could give advice. The only unnecessary thing we never did was stand in the halls and repeat our plan over and over until we memorized it. So during lunch, in, you sneak into the storage unit. Search Mr. H Mrs. H Heron Hernandez and Mr. Nern's area for evidence. Then I run. As nervous as I am, I'm also pretty excited about the whole thing. Tomorrow, we find the killer. Tuesday. I've infiltrated the storage unit. I'm writing down everything I see so far, mostly just book pages and printer paper. I can hardly see a thing in here anyway. It's so dark. Wait a minute, I found something in the corner. It's like a box full of power tools with a few other stuff and they're like white rags. Oh my god, under that box there was another. It was steeled, but I took one of the tools and broke through. It's hands. Lots and lots of severed hands. I have to run. Oh, I can't run. Someone just came in. I know I made a mess, but maybe they won't see me. Oh, uh, he, he's dead. Greg Heffley Found Dead by Gene Belcher Plainview is in shock after the middle school murder has occurred in Plainview Middle School within a two-week period. Killing happened between 12.30 and 1.45 p.m. Tuesday, March the 18th. He was found in the Plainview Middle School storage building, though his cause of death was deemed to be blunt force trauma from a claw hammer. Circumstances are uncertain due to a bomb detonating near his corpse after the murder had taken place. The bomb was short range and damaged very little more than Greg and his immediate surroundings. This is unacceptable. My husband knew my son was getting death threats but did nothing about it. Susan Heffley. The life and death of Greg Heffley. Greg was always a creative and sweet boy, says Susan Heffley. He put so much heart and soul into all his journals. I plan on publishing them soon. Creative genius sadly had his life cut short on Tuesday. The details evidence goes deeper than a hammer and a bomb. Both of Greg's hands were missing after the bombing, though that could be a result of it. The real troubling news is Greg allegedly received a letter from the handyman, an infamous serial killer who terrorized Plainview in the late 90s. See page 21. Tuesday. Today is Greg's funeral. Even though it wouldn't change what I did, I wanted to get some closure. But no, Susan left without me this morning. I called a taxi so I could get to the funeral in time. As soon as I arrived, Susan turned around and screamed, Get the f out of here. That's it. I'm going to talk to my lawyer tomorrow. We're getting divorced. I've wanted to leave her for years, but I say it so I could be a good father. I know the courts tend to favor women, but I'm going to try the, my best to get custody. My sons deserve better than a mom so petty she won't let her husband attend his own kid's funeral. Tuesday. I just got back from Greg's funeral. I thought I'd feel better afterwards, but I don't. 
I could believe Greg's been gone for a whole week. He was my best friend. Dad's been trying to make me feel better, but it's not working. Several mornings, I wake up and wonder when Greg's coming over, only for reality to hit me, and I remember he's never coming back, especially not when his death is due to my own failure. If I told Dad the truth, I know, I know he would tell me guarding the door wouldn't have saved Greg, but I know if I was there when Greg needed me, he would still be alive. Wednesday. Today, Mrs. Hefley invited me over. She said so I could take whatever I wanted from Greg's room. Said that taking his stuff is what he would have wanted. The only thing I wanted was a photo album with a bunch of pictures of me and Greg. But I knew taking only that would make Greg sad, so he took all of his video games and stuffed animals. Even though I didn't want it, I took his case folder too. Maybe if I show it to Dad, I can help find the man who killed my best friend. After I left, I could hear Susan crying as she waved goodbye. She told me I was the best friend her son ever had, and I feel sorry for him. I, who would want me as a best friend anyway? I need to stop thinking sad thoughts. Greg wouldn't want that. After I got home, I showed Dad Greg's crime notebook. He looked through a few pages before making a phone call and driving away. Dad didn't come back, not even at dinner time. Mom says he just went to work, but he wasn't supposed to work today. I've been trying to think about other things. I put all of Greg's video games by the TV, put Greg's stuffed animals next to my bed, and I don't know what I want to do with the photo album yet. It seems too special to be put with the others. It's bedtime now. I hope Dad will be back when I wake up. Wednesday. Good news, Dad's back. The folder had some really important evidence and he was just taking it to work. They were so proud of me, they let me have sugary cereal for breakfast. He might have just given us all the evidence we needed to solve a case. After that, Dad took the day off so we could go to the amusement park. Most of the rides were too scary, but it's still the happiest I've been in a long time. The only thing that isn't making me happy is Dad telling everyone I found the clues. It's not true. Greg found all, Greg found all of it. He deserves credit, too. Thursday. Dad took me to work with him today. He wanted to tell me everything he could about the mystery, but he also told me I wasn't allowed to tell anyone what he told me. He spent all morning explaining stuff, like how the camera tapes inside the club were stolen and how four other people went into the storage building around the time Greg died. I didn't understand anything until he said, The only remaining suspects remaining are Kieran Nern and Agatha Hernandez. Dad told me they took both of them in for questioning. He doesn't think they're going to say anything that could link them to the murders, but it's worth a shot. Friday. Nothing really worth writing about happened today. Dad went to work, and I stayed home with Mom. The only thing related to the case, both Mr. Nern and Mrs. Hernandez refused to talk, and after 24 hours, they had to let both of them go. I just saw Mrs. Hernandez drive up to her house. She looks upset. All I want is to find Greg's killer, or just wake up and realize this was just a bad dream. It's almost bedtime now. Hope something happens tomorrow. Miss Becky Killed by the Handyman by Marina Ada. Beloved Plainview teacher, Miss Becky, was murdered by the Handyman. When Papa Tony heard a scream outside, he ran to see someone beating Mrs. Becky with a wrench. She was then taken to the hospital where she died from the beating. The attacker was believed to be the Handyman due to the use of maintenance tools and a clear attempt to cut off her hands. The attack happened Friday at 8 p.m. If you have any information that could lead to the handyman's capture, contact the authorities, and please report if you receive a letter from the handyman. Both Greg Hefley and Miss Becky received them shortly before their deaths. Monday. I just got out of school, and it was horrible. Greg was my only friend, and he sat next to me in all my classes. A couple times, I would say something only to remember the chair is empty. The worst part of my day was second period. It was Mrs. Becky's class. I cried the entire period. Worst thing of all was until Mr. Nern gave me a detention. Patty would go over to my seat and laugh at me for crying. You're crying over your boyfriend, Greg. I didn't know you were so pathetic. Wait a minute. Mr. Nern is one of the prime suspects, and I saw Mrs. Hernandez at the time of the killing. And if Patty was with him all alone right now... I turned around and ran. She, I, I was like she, I knew she was already there, but maybe he hadn't tried anything yet. Without thinking, I yanked the door and ran inside. Mr. Nern was holding a crowbar. I tried to turn around, but he started slowly walking towards me, saying, Would you like to be my friend? Mm. I was too scared to run, but I also wanted to know the truth. I heard Greg would have been brave if he was doing this for me. I, I Knowing that made me brave enough to say, Why are you doing this? It is hurting innocent people. Why did you kill Greg? My name is Kieran Nern. I am 35 years old. But you don't want to hear about that, do you? You want to hear about the killings? It all started in 1991. 
in the town of Dorio, where I got my first kill. It was an ex-girlfriend. It was easier to lure when nobody could see us and slit her throat. Before I disposed of her body, I cut off her hands to keep his trophies. From then on, I had an uncontrollable urge to kill. All of my targets would be women about my age, and I'd always cut off their hands to get more souvenirs. But in 97, one of the bodies turned up, and I was one of the suspects. So I packed my stuff and moved to Plainview. See, I could continue my killings, but while killing people close to my age was more satisfying, it was far more difficult than picking off students. After a few years, I decided I would wait until the dust settled before returning to Doria and starting the whole cycle again. But the week before I would announce my move, I saw Jamar with his head in, in, stuck in the chair. I decided I would make one final kill before I left. I had no idea I would draw so much attention to myself. I should still be able to return soon. I have to only remove one more loose end. Before he could even finish talking, I picked up one of the chairs and threw it at him, slamming the door and before taking off. Even though I had a big cast start, Mr. Nurin caught up with me before I got off school grounds. But when I got to the woods, he was less than 10 feet away. I don't think I would have made it if I didn't run into Mr. Halfley while he was on a walk. I didn't have time to explain what was going on. All I did was yell, It's the handyman! Before Mr. Halfley turned around and he ran at Mr. Nurin and hit him in the face. Even after Mr. Nurin dropped his crowbar, Mr. Halfley kept hitting him. Nothing made him stop. Not even when Mr. Nurn started crying and begging for him to stop. I thought it would be finally over when Mr. Halfley called the police, but Mr. Nurn tried to run the second he took his eyes off him. When Mr. Halfley caught up with him, he pushed him right in front of an oncoming truck. Plainview Waste Disposal. The Handyman is Dead. Plainview is Finally Safe. By John Arbuckle. On Monday, March 31st, the infamous serial killer known as the Handyman was killed by Frank Halfley, the father of one of his victims. Though Frank is getting prosecuted for killing, the entire town is rallying outside of the courthouse in his support. I'm so glad all the victims have gotten the justice they deserve, and I'll always stand by my dad no matter what, says Roderick Heffley, the brother of Greg Heffley and son of Frank Heffley. The prosecution refused to comment. Nobody else would bring my son and over 20 other people to justice, so I did it myself. Thursday. Tomorrow's my court date. I'm not worried about being found guilty. Almost every news outlet in the country has been covering Mr. Nern and his murders lately. I've agreed to most of the interviews I've been offered. A vast majority of the press have gotten, I've gotten was positive. My lawyer told me all I have to do is treat it as self-defense and I'll win over the jury. Even though I've done all I can, to tell the world about Greg I still feel, deep down it's not enough. Some pathetic tabloid even tried to turn around and accuse Greg of being the real killer. I shut that down in a matter of hours. Susan and I are still discussing our divorce. I should have done it years ago, but I was always afraid she would take the kids. I never felt like I was the best father, but now I'll be the best father I can to my remaining sons from now on. July. Mr. Heffley's trial ended today. He was found not guilty for the murder of Mr. Nern. I helped him out as a witness. The prosecution didn't even try. I guess they were just happy to see so many people brought to justice. Lately, I've been helping Dad solve other crimes around Plainview. I've only solved three so far, but Dad tells me three cases can make all the difference. I don't have much room left in my diary, so I've decided to finish it off with a tribute to the amazing detective and my best friend, Greg Kefley. Not gonna lie, that was a very valid, that was so cool, because like, like, I, no, this is a hell of a nice fanfiction, I'm not gonna lie, because like, I like how it like shows the perspectives of different characters after Greg gets wasted. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and like I said, I'll try and have it upload on Wednesday. Um, but no promises. If not, I'll just have a usual Saturday morning upload at like 12. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe if you did. And yeah, I'm out of here. Peace.